fighting for his presidential candidate. I'm fighting to restore respect for farmers. I'm fighting to foster unity in the IFA. I'm fighting to ensure that we have the freedom to farm and to protect our incomes so that we can all have a viable livelihood. Welcome to an agricultural presentation on the JP Marin video channel. In this video, we'll be covering the launch of Martin Stapleton and his campaign to become IFA president. We'll hand you over to Sean Navery, chairman of Limerick IFA, to introduce Martin Stapleton. Deputy President, uh, fellow farmers and IFA members, fellow IFA County Chairs and Commodity Chairs, Regional Vice President, welcome to the official launch of Martin Stapleton's campaign to run for President over the next two months. Uh, here tonight we have some county councillors and senators here, so I'd like to welcome there as well. Uh, like, over the last week there's been a lot of interaction between IFA and the government parties, and I would like to acknowledge the access we received on behalf of IAPA and farmers. You know, it's a big part of what we do. Um, just a bit of background, my name is Sean Henry, for people that don't know me, I'm the Limerick IAPA County Chair. And just to explain why I'm up here tonight. Earlier this year, Mark Stapleton came to me one evening and asked me to chair his campaign to run for president of IAPA. He asked me how I felt about it. And did I feel he was fit for the job? And you know, that's very important. I needed no convincing. I did not need to think about it. And most importantly, I felt that Martin Stapleton was the best person for the job. And I'll explain why. Over the last eight years, I have been observing Martin Stapleton as lib at the Liberty County Executive and National Council of IA. Martin has chaired the Farm Business Committee and later as um, National Treasurer of IFA. The one thing that stood out to me is that I noticed was that Martin was never afraid to tell a straight story. He always told members the reality of an issue. He never avoided the issue by watering down the problem. He was always straight and direct. He could have avoided robust debates in our meetings and questions by walking down his report, but that's not Martin's state. You'll see it in his motto and his, his, um, you know, his manifesto, like he's very direct like that. From Martin, you will get a straight story. And you may not like or agree with what you hear, and it's, but it's very important to start any debate from a foundation that's realistic, and that's certainly Martin's state. The straight talking and analysis of situations uh, is, I believe, Martin's biggest strength. He's a realist and will not dress up difficult situations with half truths or false expectations. And if you look at Martin's motto that's up here, no false promises, just honesty and hard work. And, you know, that wasn't a creation. That was, you know, absolutely Martin to the core in terms of how we see what we're doing. We have a job to do over the next five or six weeks to get Martin Stapleton elected. You know, we need, look, it's, it's not just flowing speeches from the top table here. We need people, you know, to talk to Siobhan in the office there, you know, where, you know, to, if they want to give us two days of their time to canvas, we absolutely need that help, you know, to get the job, to get Martin elected. You know, we're not looking for massive amounts of your time. We want a bit of your time. Let us two days of your time and we can get Martin Stapleton to the next. So, with that, I'm going to call on Martin Stapleton, Martin, um, our candidate here in Limerick for President of IFA, um, you know, to address you here tonight.
Thank you, Sean, for that uh, supportive introduction. And I would say, Sean spoke about me going and asked him to be the, the chairman of the campaign leader or whatever. There was never any doubt, there was nobody else to ask, because all the outstanding choice. And, you know, it's very clear to me that he's putting in Trojan work, he's really good at what he does, and he's back going about the campaign. And I would want to thank you for that, Sean. Um, equally, it's a real privilege for me to sit at this top table with the men up that's up here with me. Um, all my progress or my life in, in, in getting involved in IFA and memory, I look to Richard Kennedy and Tom Dillon in no particular order. It was the people that motivated me, that inspired me to keep going, that showed me what could be done. Um, if you kept at it and kept working for farmers, two men who have always put forward the best they could for their fellow farmers and with no other agenda except for their fellow farmers. Um, Great. I suppose to go back six or five, six years ago, it wouldn't be possible to ask you to bury not to be the guest speaker. <laughs> we're living quality with, without having envy, you can now ask them the light of the evening tonight uh, to show the support and hopefully to motivate all of you. Here in Tipperary, it's appropriate to have the very man, I suppose. I've always been really proud of the fact that I'm a great man. And sometimes I'm so close to the border, sometimes the local Tipperary people might get caught in that. But when you start looking for votes, you realize that we didn't order to no matter at all. So, <laughs> um, I want to go on to coach John and, and Lee, who mentioned my mother. I want to say how proud I am that she's here tonight. Um, it's, it's really a really privilege for me. My father has passed away for the last three years, and he'd be very proud of me here too. I also want to, as John has mentioned, Siobhan, I want to thank her for the role she's been. Like, in a family, in the context of a family, as somebody who has to be present today, you have to wonder, will you get the support of the family? And I have 100%, 110, 120 percent support from Jamal, and also from my three teenage children uh, who are down here some days, Jessica, Jane, and Vicky. So I just want to thank and acknowledge that before I go on. Many years ago, as it is now, I think it was 2001, uh, I left off in the farm, and when I did, I decided I was going to, because I enjoyed being the chairman of the market in South Dakota, I just said I couldn't continue on in the IFA. And, and very quickly a vacancy came up for the post of um, vice chairman in the middle. And so at my first IFA meeting, I remember I put my name forward for the vice chair. Not surprisingly, I didn't win. Um, but the biggest memory I had that night is a gentleman from West Park, from, from Bear. Coming up to me, he was the Lynn Munster Vice President, Donald Kelly, and he's here tonight. Um, and fair way to come on, I never forgot you for it. He came over to me and he said, Don't let that defeat set you back. He said, You've shown tonight the ability to be president of the FA someday. And for me, I, with, with pride, I stand up here and say, I think that someday is now come. Um, with your backing, your campaign, and your votes, I will, I want to, I can serve the next president of the FA. I think what I did know and have learned for sure over the last few years in my involvement, and it has served me well as president, is that it's not what happens to you in life, it's how you react to what happens that matters most. I didn't take that defeat lying down, I never did that. I got up and kept going. I got shortly after nominated as the Limited Representative of the Farm Business Committee. Then I became the Chairman of the Farm Business Committee and went on to become the Treasurer of the Post of General Wood. Um, I served farmers at that time by delivering pretty much the submissions, including supports for farmers, farmers that suffered cows with sheep, tax relief for all farmers. I delivered the innovative first low-cost loan scheme from through the SPCI. I helped to get cultivated loan initiative for credit units off the ground. But for me, without doubt, the most satisfaction I got in my role in the was the countless hours I put into helping people who had their difficulties with non-performing loans. Hugely challenging, but hugely rewarding. 
So, right now, I have to say, I feel I'm well ready for the big job. Tonight, I'm here to offer straight talking an outline that will protect and defend your livelihoods for the next four years. This, I assure you, I'm not going to make any false promises. I only have honesty and hard work to offer. That hard work has started. I believe it was demonstrated over the last two weeks when, as John said, my Limerick IFA colleagues and myself were the first round to publicly walk up to the doors of agriculture house and demand that the minister respect the need for farmers to pay us our money on time. Since then, we have seen the organisation take significant action on the payments to the issue and on the greatest delegation issue. That is exactly what we wanted on that day. So then, what am I fighting for as a presidential candidate? I'm fighting to restore respect for farmers. I'm fighting to foster unity in the IFA. I'm fighting to ensure that we have the freedom to farm and to protect our incomes so that we can all have a viable livelihood. I'm not going to waste your time here proclaiming the longest list of all woes of Irish agriculture. Perhaps we spend too much time with that. And you're all perfectly aware of those issues. But I do propose to move forward and to set up my vision of how we should tackle these issues. Because we have to do something different. We have to accept that we have lost some of our influence in the NFA. And what we are doing is no longer working effectively. We first spoke about our 14 principles of respect, unity, freedom to farm, and protecting farm incomes as they were. I'm glad to say many people have taken notes of those teams and reused them. And they have reused them because of their importance to all Irish farmers. What, you may ask, do those four pillars of our campaign look like if you elect me as your president? They would look like you have a president who will work night and day to harness the collective power of the IFA. I will do this policy work in relationship to the IFA and the government representatives who oversee the legislation that affects our way of life. I will also do this policy work in relationships with our food purchasers and our service providers, ensuring a proper two way interaction for the better of all. They will look like you have a president who will create a reputation for the IFA that will make its membership feel proud and strong. I want non members also to sit up once again and admire the qualities of the NFA. I will communicate your message clearly and show the government that there is real strength in our numbers and in our message. They will look like you have a president who puts you and your needs first. All the news about Irish agriculture makes a great story and it deserves to be heard. We must be willing to call ourselves and the good that we are doing. Because there is a great side to our family, and the public need to know it. We must remember to include that great story in every single conversation about family, so that those who criticize us would be suggesting improvements rather than undermining the foundation of what is a truly great agricultural country. To do that, we need to work together to secure the votes that will get us elected. It is you. The members who know best what it takes to secure the future of our And my promise to you is to deliver the kind of leadership that gets the job done for farmers to ensure that our views are not operating in order, but heard and respected and acted upon. I am convinced that together we can pull our power and reassert our influence as a great organization once again. It is not good enough anymore that we see only to defend our position. All too often, we are asked if we are climate change deniers or if we are a hard right organization. We certainly are not. But if the question has been asked us, we do have to recognize that we have a perception problem. We cannot fight in every war, so we must be stronger negotiators and in these critical times by being willing to provide solutions as well as highlight our objections. It is time for politicians to understand that they cannot ignore the views of farmers 
because we are a foundation of the Irish economy. Damage agriculture, and as we've seen before, we will damage the whole nation. My decision is clear. We as farmers and as farming families have the right to farm our land in a way that we know works best for us. We didn't raise the course. Any interference in that basic field should be resisted, just like we did into the airspace, the horse and jockey, and Limerick over the last couple of weeks. That includes any policy decisions set up by government or by process that control the livelihoods of farmers and take away our ability to make our own decisions. We know, as in any sector of the economy and society, that farmers have rights and responsibilities in equal measure. We will not be found wanting in meeting those responsibilities, nor will we be found wanting in defending our rights to farm. Farming policy in all areas must be realistic, it must be workable, it must be sustainable, and it must be funded in a way that makes sense to every farmer. Setting down policies without involving us as key custodians of the land is just unacceptable. It will lead to failure and it has to stop. All members of policy, from how capital is managed to how and when subsidies are delivered, must be carried out with the welfare of the farmer in mind. It's no longer acceptable to undermine our duty of feeding a growing population by weakening our ability to do that life giving job. I hold it to be true, I have always held it to be true, that it is our responsibility to help feed a growing global population, just as it is the Germans' responsibility to help engineer for the world, or indeed the Arabs to help fuel the world. Our current demand of the nitrous derivation is a classic example, imposing restrictions to improve water quality without scientific evidence showing that their showing their effectiveness or their necessity is at best crude or reaction from the European Union. It is no wonder now that many farmers think that the water quality regulations are looking more than the rules to reduce stock numbers in order to reduce emissions. What other sector of the economy has a fact to reach 80% of their emission target? With a realistic expectation that new technologies will be available shortly in order to get us to 100% of those targets. We've already complied with over 30 measures from global cooperation, breeding improvements, changing roadways, moving water trucks, putting in more hedges, planting more trees, low emission storage spreading, using protected area, and so on. And it is goes on. All to protect water quality, improve their biodiversity, and we're still told it's not enough. I want to work hard to make sure that enough is enough. So that we farmers will not be driven off the land due to the government or, European, or the Europeans imposing measures on us without the proof that they will be effective in stopping climate change. I ask you, are we respecting the farmers for what we deliver? Because I think the answer is no, we're not. There's plenty of evidence that shows that farmers are not the top of the government priority. We've had Zoom calls last week instead of a serious sit down meeting between the Minister and the Commissioner. There have been no debates or discussions, instead, decisions already made. There was a ministerial tour of the grants last year giving a series of lectures to us, all passed off as consultation. Is it any wonder that we have lost our sense of being respected? In fairness, in fairness, there's two sides to every time. Can we in the IFA do better as a lobby group? I think the answer is we must. I believe there's room for improvement and I will work hard for that if I'm left. Our communication must be better. We need better internal communication between our sectors. We need to communicate better with our members. Above all, we need better communication with the public. And with this in mind, if elected, I will give a far greater communication role to, our, to some of our outstanding staff in the farm sector. Internally, we need, to, we need the farm representatives to work hard to agree policies that work for all sectors. This will take imagination and we will compromise, but it is necessary if we are to maximize the value of our unity. More than ever, 
Farms to the back, all of them are around. And the reason we have an invited reputation at home and abroad for producing quality food. We produce enough food here to feed 40 million people. That is our unique advantage, and it is also our source of pride, and it must never, ever be taken for granted. I want to set policies that would make sense at this in Brussels and Dublin that ignore the value of food production. Policy must get the balance between food production and the environmental issues right. And those policies must make sense when they hit the fields and the farmers. I ask you to give me a mandate to get in there to make sure that it does. That means that every farmer and in every gate must be represented. Every farm, every farm family has to be heard. Under my leadership, I want to IFA, I want the IFA to represent every sheep and pellet farmer, every dairy farmer, every pig farmer, every beef farmer, every forestry farmer, everyone who grows potatoes, food, fruit and veg. I want them, and especially I want every young man and woman who is investing in the future of farming to know that the IFA is an organisation that they can trust to represent them. I want them to know that whatever difficulties we have, we have so much more than that in common. I want them to know that duty, strength and delivery can again be called in care of the IFA. There's no delivery without strength. And there's no certainty without strength. And there's no certainty, there's certainly no strength without duty. Getting the job done is going to be central to my term as president. As I said, no false promises, just honesty and hard work. If we're going to make a real difference in how farming evolves over the next 10 to 15 years, we will need more financial support, especially to fund environmental measures. But we will also, as farmers, need to be willing to look again at how the financial support we have is distributed. We will need to focus those on vulnerable areas, vulnerable sectors, quality food production, and an enhanced environmental ambition to ensure all these are not only protected, but enhanced. I come from a family of farm. As a child, I watched and learned and helped my parents to run a farm that provided a livelihood for our family. Today, it is my family's involvement that has been in a position to ask you to support me as I seek this job. I am proud and delighted to say that like thousands of people across this country, we farm as a family. There's no distinction between the art or in the middle power between a man or a woman, between a son or a daughter, the way it should be. I have seen firsthand the power of the female perspective, and the reality is that we are now harnessing that power in the IFA. While we have been incredibly successful in the staff side of the legal opportunities in power, it remains the case that we don't have enough women involved at all levels within IFA. That is equally true of new people, young people. And worryingly for us, it's also starting to happen with progressive active farmers. In order to achieve sufficient diversity, we will need some element of cultural change within our organization so that the type of people I just mentioned can give up their time in a way that allows them to feel valued and feel safe. Above all, we need to ensure that we support young people entering our industry. Young people are, have always been our lifeblood, and with this in mind, I commit, as President, to see to improve our relationship with Mocker so that support for young people are maximized in the coming years. Since 1995, I've worked to develop and grow the family farm at home. Myself and my wife, Vaughan, and our family know what it takes to keep going, to meet the challenges head on. I want to do that for you, for all the farmers in Ireland, as President of IFA. A vote for me is a vote to secure that future. My pledge, if elected, is that all of you will be heard within this organisation. My promise is that the IFA will be heard in all this year, at every level, in our secure future of every Irish farmer. Friends, Thank you for listening.
and give your support. So let's go out now and pay and make this happen. Thank you very much. You know, he's Mark you know, takes these things out, which you can see that he's a deep thinker, and, and he spent a lot of time, you know, analyzing the situation, so he's most definitely the best man for, for, for President of IFA. I'd just like to maybe recount one or two anecdotes of Mark and myself, um, go around the country, um, meeting farmers, you know, um, up and down the country. Like, we've been up to Cavan, we've been up to Monaghan, um, we've been down the southeast and down the West Park and various other places. But <coughs> one of the things, and America is, is reluctant to talk about this, is, in, I suppose, it's a legacy of America's time in the Farm Business Committee and tackling, um, you know, farm credit cases, you know, of people in very difficult situations. And in the last fortnight, I was in the kitchen of a farmer who said to me, Sean, the monkey on my back of that dead situation, you know, IFA in their dealing with his lender, you know, retrieved the situation, which means, which he said, I can sleep better at night, you know, and that's down to the solid work of IFA, the Farm Business Committee, and the work of actually getting respect for farmers, and Martin had a, certainly had a big part to play in that. Another day we were out canvassing well up the country, and in a short period of time, a man and his wife, uh, who had returned to Ireland and bought land here, had been in a dire financial situation, and they had been getting nowhere with it. They approached IFA, via Martin and various other people, and within a short period of time, that was, and we happened to be in the area, we were directed to go meet them, Martin had never met them, and again, they gave him a hope in the air. Such was the relief of pressure in that situation. They found that hat out of the anxiety and the worry. And that's the man that we're trying to elect here tonight. You know, he believes in farmers, he has put in place structures, you know, worked as a team, gained the respect of both bankers and farmers and delivered solutions in those situations. It's an IV is a team and Martin is a big, a big part of that. So, you know, with that, you know, I'd like to wish Martin the very best in, in this campaign. He's most certainly the very best man for it. And I have the fullest confidence, confidence that he'll be a great leader of IV. Thank you, Sean Lavery. That it is for this video. I also have an extended version of this event. It includes support speeches from John Dillon, Joe Healy, and many more. It is with great pleasure that I advocate you all to vote for Matthew Senate to be the next president of my event. We need the strong IFA now. We need the strong IFA in the future more than we ever needed in the past. And I think now is the man that's going to do that. I'm, I'm sure now is it. Is, as Richard has said, is it very little to answer questions on the spot. So the first one for me is, you know, an exceptional leader. Uh, and I think Martin has, you know, been on so many uh, groups, has represented farmers in so many places has always had that leadership within him uh, and he's expressed it. Uh, when I think about leadership, I think about work ethic, I think about trust, I think about integrity, uh, I think about being grounded in humility, 
and I was, you know, wrapped into your family, you know, exactly where you came from, what your background is. Uh, to access it, please buy me a cup of coffee. The address is now on the screen. Please send your email address or your phone number and state presidential launch and I will send you the link to it. You can check the description there for further instructions on the status of the extended video. If you enjoyed this video please click like or the thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel. If you are an IFA member please for for Martin Stapleton this November 2023. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.